Pastor Rob Bell's new book grapples with the big questions humans have struggled with for centuries. How can a good and powerful God allow innocent people, like the victims of the disaster in Japan, suffer unspeakable tragedies? And then, as so many Christians believe, why would God allow those victims to, who chose another faith condign to eternal punishment? Why would he do that? The book is called Love Wins, a book about heaven, hell, and the fate of every person who ever lived. It's already created something of a stir in the evangelical Christian community because of Bell's provocative take on heaven and hell. Time Magazine calls him a rock star in the church world. Preaching. We feel this pain deep in our bones. Connecting. And yet, within that suffering were all these latent seeds of creativity. And inspiring his congregation. When we suffer, this too will shape me. But Rob Bell's latest book is also inspiring charges of heresy as he takes on the notion of hell. What we believe about heaven and hell is incredibly important because it exposes what we believe about who God is. And he questions why a loving God would condemn human souls to eternal suffering. Will only a few select people make it to heaven? And will billions and billions of people burn forever in hell? Some evangelicals are calling it twisted scripture. Rob Bell, as the pastor of this large congregation, is, is obscuring God's word. He's teaching false doctrine, and he's unorthodox in his beliefs. Jesus was himself very, very clear about the reality and threat of hell. And Pastor Rob Bell joins us now. Boy, you really have kicked it up. Uh, <laughs> you, you look at, uh, at various blogs at, at, in, in, in the Christian community and they say, you're a false prophet, this is false theology, you're committing heresy. Well, I, act I actually am deeply compelled and fascinated with Jesus. And I think that the orthodox historic Christian tradition is this vast, diverse conversation that's been going on for thousands of years. And I think Jesus can handle the discussion. I think he can handle the debate. I'm interested in his message of good so, news. So how do you handle the big questions provoked by what we've been seeing in Japan? Uh, as, as I said in, in the intro, first of all, why would God yeah. simply allow this yeah. kind of suffering yeah. to exist? And then, uh, you know, most of the Japanese are Shinto or Buddhist. Yeah. Are they right. condemned to hell? It's a great question. First off, when there is human suffering and we shed tears, I believe God sheds tears too. So I begin with a God who identifies with our pain and suffering. I don't have a conception of a God who is distant, detached, you know what I mean, floating on a cloud somewhere, sort of going, well, you got yourself into this mess. My understanding is of a God who deeply, deeply cares, who empathizes, who sheds a tear like we do. And, and I begin with the assumption that God is love, and that God's love is a vast, wide, expansive, indestructible reality. And so much of this belief from reading your book was sparked by uh, the photograph of a painting that it was in your grandmother's yeah, yeah. house, which yeah. is actually, I hope we can show it right now. It shows, oh, I guess, the sure. elect going to heaven? Going to a really shiny city with no dirt in it or something. I, I think it's important to point out that how Jesus actually talked about heaven is for many people in our culture, the fundamental way they understand heaven is evacuation. Jesus, someplace else. Yeah, essentially Jesus is the ticket, and if you believe, say, confess, repent, whatever the right, you know, different stripe tells you, or the different tribe tells you is the way to do it, then you go somewhere else, somewhere other than this place. And so a lot of the dominant images then are of clouds and puppies and white robes and perfect hair. But Jesus' fundamental question was, how do we bring heaven here? You know, his prayer, your, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So his understanding was the union of heaven and it's earth. It's something you have to create right well, now. Well, it is an invitation to take part in the life of heaven now, and, and that's a really huge... And then flip it around, of course, the images of hell that, you know, you sort of brought yeah. up with, whether, they're, let's say, they're metaphors, fire, yeah, darkness, yeah, yeah, yeah. distance, punishment. Well, you and I, we have this invitation every day for, for love, joy, peace. We can forgive our enemy or we can throw a stone back. Um, we can create all sorts of hells right now if we want to. Genocide, rape, abuse, financial schemes. But then what do you say to those who say those who commit genocide and rape yeah. should be condigned, should be consigned? Well, I think that at the core of the human experience for thousands of years has been this longing for justice. The, the tyrannical dictator who is killing innocents, there's something within us that says... And that's that what says, hell is about. Well, something within us says... That, that person needs to be held accountable. That person needs to be brought to justice. That is 
throughout the Christian and out of the Jewish tradition, like the prophet Amos, let justice roll like a river. I think that's a profound human longing we should hold on to. The, the problem is when it becomes those bad people, as if my hands are clean. It, you know what I mean? And then hell becomes this, it's all for those people who are terrible and wrong, and then it becomes a way to not so, owe it. You know, not own up to your own contribution. So we're all sinners, and then so you have a problem with the idea that God would create sinners who would then choose hell? Well, in some ways, we see people choosing hell around us all the time. I mean, we see people in the face of the invitation to love your neighbor, exploit the neighbor, abuse the neighbor. So I begin with the reality of hell here and now. I also begin with the reality of the life of heaven here and now. Jesus kept saying, heaven, the kingdom of heaven, it's here now, it's among you, it's upon you. I wish we had a lot more time for this. <laughs> the book is called Love Wins by Rob Bell. Rob, thanks very much for coming in this morning. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back.